Hello there guys and welcome, welcome back to the channel. So we do have update about the whole champion balancing and attribute system that Kabam is trying to implement and also a cancellation in one of the April's buffs, but uh, let's break it down. So first things first, the good, the best and the amazing news is that Captain Britain and Omega Sentinel are not a part of balancing program, therefore anybody who is excited for Omega Sentinel is you know a lot more encouraged uh, to pursue her and that includes me uh, because I do like the champion and if previously I would not have opened crystals for her at all then now I probably will especially given that she's top three prestige and uh, knowing that she could have gotten changed obviously was a huge 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 red flag and problem factor and I still remain with the same attitude if a champion is a part of balancing program I don't really want anything to do with that champion until the balancing is done. Simple as that. I do not feel comfortable investing money or time or resources pursuing champions that, you know, will get altered uh, down the line or might get altered down the line. Uh, so now, you know, I'm much more inclined to pursue Omega Sentinel. Also, let's face it. Let's just call a spade a spade. They gave Omega Sentinel top three prestige and there would be thousands of people pushing to get Omega Sentinel. Arena scores are going to be insane, especially for now. Uh, and there will be a lot of Omega Sentinel crystals sold. Let me put it as blunt as possible. If Kabam released a poop emoji, gave it zero HP and zero attack points and gave it top three prestige, there would be thousands of people chasing it, spending crystals for it and <laughs> trying to dupe that poop emoji as many times as needed to get it all the way up to SIG 200 because prestige matters. And the great example is, I don't know, Tor Ragnarok. Everybody hates Tor Ragnarok and people rank him. Silver Surfer. Most of the people who have him don't really use him. Now, I personally happen to quite like Silver Surfer, but would I have chased Silver Surfer as hard if he didn't have the top prestige in the game? No, I wouldn't have. So when it comes to Omega Sentinel, you know, I might not have pursued her, but there would have been hundreds of people who chase her because of prestige alone, even if she got balanced. But now that she isn't, you know, it will just make uh, that uh, amount of people who chase Omega Sentinel the best they can even higher. And we can see huge arena cutoffs and everything else. The second thing is that they are also delaying the launch of that rating system. They have prepared a set of approximately 30 champions, but they want to get to about 100 before they launch it. I don't want to be too critical of it. It might work out decent potentially on idea standpoint. I still don't find much value in it. And, you know, if they're delaying it, I'm kind of whatever about it. You know, I, I don't care when it launches. Ideally, in ideal world, the balancing system goes away and potentially this grading system does too. Now, the last point of the video, and I don't want to kind of hold you up guys too long, uh, we regret to inform you that due to the current real-world events, we will be pulling a champion we had planned an update on for next month. We do not feel that celebrating this champion at this time is appropriate and is insensitive. Gamora will be the only champion to receive an update in April and will have updated animations as well. Now, let's be clear. It sucks. You know, obviously, whenever you have a choice between two champion buffs and one champion buff, you're going to want the two champion buffs. And that's the same case with me. Especially because speculation is it is Red Guardian, and I would absolutely love to see what he can do with, you know, slightly buffed numbers and things like that. Because I have long been saying Red Guardian just needs a little bit of love from Kabam to be an amazing, amazing champion. All that put together, though. I'm not going to harp at Kabam too much there. I get it. Why I get it? Because I pretty much did the same thing on my channel. Not a lot of you noticed, I know that the most people who are actively on my streams might have. You see, at the moment, my top, uh, sorry, my top uh, title is uh, up there just now on the left corner. It's called Sea of Awesome. Three weeks ago, it was Comrade Daddy. Now, I have used both of these titles, plus uh, the High Ground title uh, repeatedly in past. But for majority of the time over the last year or half a year or so it has been the comrade daddy and nobody asked me to change nobody moaned it but two weeks ago when the news broke out about the events in ukraine it made me feel awkward nobody even mentioned it to me i just looked at it and i found yeah that might be a bit inappropriate now 100 percent, i am against you know the entire cancel culture and people being pressured to do into things 
but it's part of today's society. And I can guarantee you if Kabam had buffed him, you know, there would be a slew of complaints. And plenty of them would be perfectly legitimate as well. Uh, however, being the content creator that I think I like to think most kind of fairly criticizes Kabam for their mess ups and I do like to praise them as well when they do deserve the praise, but I definitely don't shy away from launching my criticism at direction of Kabam. And, you know, whenever they mess up, I will speak about it. However, this time I, I am not going to pretend that I'm super mad at Kabam. It is something that, you know, again, in ideal world wouldn't be happening at all, or even in slightly less ideal world, they would have had a replacement. And if they can pull a champion, then they can buff one, you know, instead. Uh, that is, I think, something for them to consider in future, to kind of prepare an extra buff that they can hold in case something like this happens again, whether for technical reasons or some other reasons where they need to remove a buff, they can just replace it quickly. And that would, you know, completely avoid any kind of frustrations because they wouldn't even have to tell us about that. They could just, you know, swap out the buffs. Nobody's the wiser and all good and just put that buff, let's say, in this case, Red Guardian, on a shelf for half a year. I think that is, you know, very reasonable kind of thing to do for a bigger company, just have a couple of buffs prepared as spares, you know? Because you never know what's going to happen. Some internal prob problems, some technical problems, some real-world stuff, you much rather have a spare. It's kind of like having, you know, a bit of money put aside for rainy day, just in case you need it. But since Kabam has not done that, and let's face it, we're talking about Kabam, we can't really, we don't really expect them to operate at that kind of standards. Uh, I do understand it. I'm not gonna yell at them. I'm not gonna put their feet to the fire. I'm not gonna shout at them. I can completely understand how it would be insensitive to anybody playing this game in or from Ukraine or people who are invested in this conflict. And I have viewers from Russia. I have viewers from Ukraine, and. Again, there's the important part to understand that regular everyday people, you know, they are the ones who, who, who deserve our sympathy. They are the ones who we should feel for first and foremost. And largely, even when it comes to people from Russia, but definitely when it comes to people from Ukraine, they didn't choose this. They didn't want it. And unfortunately, especially Ukrainians will be the ones to suffer from it for many, many years to come. So, again, it, it's a complicated thing that we are living in a very complicated time, but I'm definitely not going to jump on a roof and curse at Kabam for not buffing another champion or how stupid it is. Digital pixels have nothing to do with the current political situation. Yeah, they don't, but who these champions are represent or remind us about and who these champions draw attention to, do have to do with political events. No matter how much we like to pretend, you know, Captain America might be a superhero that is fictional character that's created, you know, decades and decades ago, but it also kind of serves as a symbol of America to many places in the world, so on and so forth. So, again, <laughs> This is a complicated thing, and it's easy to be angry. It's easy to be upset at everything that somehow remotely displeases or inconveniences us. It's much more harder to take a breath and kind of be, you know, understanding or reserved. Or even if you disagree with something, even if you disagree with something, then as far as I'm concerned, this is much better reason not to have a two buffs this month than whatever the reason was for the this month and fly home and third of a buff and not having a second buff or for not having buffs in December because people needed holidays. I think that's significantly more shit reason. I think you can manage your workload to prepare in advance for those buffs. I think not having buffs in January and February is a shit ass, you know, situation and much more deserving of criticism than actually having put in the time, work and effort to create a buff and then choosing not to publish because of an issue like this. That is something I can respect much more than pure laziness, tardiness, or whatever else 
was the reason why we got one buff in four months and it was absolutely shit. So there we go. I, I know that what I said is not going to please everyone. I know that uh, this opinion, you know, is, is not aimed to uh, gather the anger clicks or whatever you want. But that's how I feel because I can genuinely understand it. At least I hope I can. Anyways, uh, that is it for this update. I will load the video coming out today, so stay tuned. And I'm going to catch you guys soon. See ya. Hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. So we have all the information about